firefighter. I know what it's like. You do? How come? Because I went on a field trip to the fire station with my friend Mickey Mouse. Wait a minute, you're not Mickey Mouse? Wow, Mickey Mouse! Hi! Uh -huh. Hi, Mickey! Hi, Mickey. Karen, here for the tour of the station? Yes. Well, great. My name is Bob, and I'm an engineer here. And one of my main jobs is to drive the fire trucks. Here, I'll show them to you. Now this is a hook and ladder truck. You see up there we have an extra long ladder we can use to rescue people trapped high up in a building. Well, what else do you carry in these trucks? <laughs> we carry lots of tools. Power saws, big fans to clear the smoke away, lights, wire cutters, rescue tools, even mops, buckets and brooms to clean up after the fire. Where'd Mickey go? I bet I know. Vroom, 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 ha! Oh boy, this is fun! Vroom, vroom, vroom! I thought so. Yes, hook and ladder trucks have a second driver steering the back part of the truck to help make it around sharp corners. Now come on down, Mickey, and I'll show you another kind of fire truck. Okay, huh? This one doesn't have a ladder on top. No, this is called an engine or a pumper. It carries water, hose, and pumps to push the water through the hose. How come you carry water? Don't you just hook the hose up to the fire hydrant? No, usually yes, but sometimes there isn't a hydrant around, or it may be a small fire. Is driving the truck the most important job here? Or what job is? Oh no, Karen, every job here is important. We all have to work together as a team. Go ahead, Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Hi, Karen. I'm Captain Murray. I'm in charge of the team here at the fire station. Is Engineer Grant giving you a good idea of how we all work together around here? Yeah. Sure is. You know, when there's a fire, our most important job is to help people, to get them out of burning buildings and away from danger. And the next most important thing is to make sure that the fire doesn't spread and to save property. And to do all that, we all have to work together. Here's how it works. In case of an emergency, people dial 911 or the special emergency number in their area. The calls that report a fire go to special operators called dispatchers. They work at the dispatch center. Here we decide which fire station should send its trucks and how many trucks to send. When the alarm goes off at the station, everybody hurries to get ready. They go to their positions on the trucks. Yes, we still use fire poles. They put on their special equipment, including clothing that's fire resistant. That means it won't burn easily. Then trucks hurry to the fire, using their sirens and lights to warn people to get out of the way. wear special equipment to help protect themselves. Their long coats and helmets and boots all help protect them from the heat. And of course, they put on their masks and special breathing equipment before they go into the smoke or fire. The hose is hooked up to the nearest hydrant. Firefighters get ladders, hose, and rescue equipment off their trucks. The firefighters use the hose to get water to exactly the right spot. Use ladders to reach the roof.
Sometimes they use an axe or chainsaw to cut holes to let the heat and smoke out. It's important to use the buddy system. That means firefighters always work together. So if one gets into trouble, the other person can help. And remember, the firefighter's first job is to rescue people. Firefighters look weird when they have their special equipment on. Yes, I guess they do. But now you know they're your friends and they need that special equipment to help protect themselves. Would you like to see what the equipment looks like up close? Sure! Scary. Well, it's very important. It's special breathing equipment that keeps smoke and poisonous gases out and gives us a full tank of fresh air to breathe. Hear how I sound when I talk with this on? Yeah! You try it, Karen. Hi, Mickey. How do I sound? Kind of funny. If you're ever at a fire and you see the firefighters with the special equipment on, don't be scared and don't ever hide. Listen to what they say, because they're there to help you. Okay, we'll remember. Now we know what all the equipment is for. But I have a question. Sure. What do you do in between fires? Do you get to watch TV? <laughs> well, there's not much time for that. For one thing, firemen have to stay fit. And I'll show you why. Here, you two carry that hose over there. Yes, and that's without water. When it's filled with water, a section of hose like that one over there weighs over 90 pounds. So, after our morning lineup, we do exercises to stay in shape. Not only do the men and women have to be ready and in shape, but the equipment does too. That's right. The hose has to be cleaned and properly cared for. The power saws and the trucks themselves have to be filled with fuel and in good working condition. After all, what if there was a fire and the truck wouldn't start? All of the equipment has to be ready to go for the next time. You never know when there's going to be a fire. So, firefighters are on duty around the clock. We eat here. Come on, ready? Hurry up. We're hungry. And just like at home, we take turns doing the cooking. We sleep here too, so we have to work together to keep the place neat and clean. Oh, woo! You sure have important jobs! Well, that's right. Did you know that in some areas, especially away from the big cities, fire departments are made up of volunteers? Firefighting isn't their main job, but they do it because they want to help out the community. They work at other jobs, but when they hear the alarm sound, they drop everything and rush to the fire. They fight fires using the training they got in their free time. I'd like to be a volunteer firefighter. Me too! Firefighter Mickey! Reporting for duty! Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have a volunteer department in our city. But you can do your part right now by being prepared. How? Oh. I know by knowing how to call 911. Or the emergency number in your area. Of course, if the fire is in your house, first you get out as quickly as possible. Then you call from a neighbor's house or a payphone. To call 911, you don't need any money. And when you're on the phone, you have to stay calm. Tell exactly what the problem is. Another way you can be prepared is to know what to do if your clothing catches fire. What do you do? Well, you stop, drop, and roll wherever you are. Roll on the ground and that'll put the fire out. Let me show you. Okay, Karen, now stop, drop, cover your face with your hands, and roll. Good. <laughs> and now, Mickey, it's your turn. Stop, drop, cover your face with your hands, and roll. All right, Mickey. Uh, yeah! I know it's important to be prepared, but I hope I'm never in a fire. Me neither. 
neither. Well, that's why it's important that you help prevent fires. Never use matches and don't use the stove or oven if there isn't an adult around. Be sure that your home has smoke detectors and every family should have an escape plan to tell them exactly how to get out of the house or apartment in case of a fire. Now, you've both seen how important teamwork is in preventing and fighting fires. Well, we'd like to make you members of the team. Well, that sounds great. And you even got firefighter hats? Uh-huh. Lee, come on. Coming. Uh, oh, hold it, Lee. Hold it. Gee, thanks, Mickey. Bye. Wow, what a great hat. Where'd you get it? From Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse? Wow, well, I wish I had that kind of imagination. Oh! <laughs>